Hello, uh, my name is Neil Barber. I'm a consultant urologist at Frimley Park Hospital, which is part of Frimley Health NHS Foundation Trust. Uh, I'm director of the Frimley Renal Cancer Centre, uh, which is a tertiary referral centre for the surgical management of renal cancer, and I chair the Regional Renal Cancer Specialist MDT. Can you explain what robotic surgery is? Robotic assisted surgery uh, is an advanced and standard minimally invasive surgery known as laparoscopy, avoiding the need for large surgical wounds of yesteryear. The advantages of robotic assisted surgery uh, are threefold really. Firstly, uh, there is the advantage in terms of vision, which is 3D and binocular rather than the 3D vision you might have at the cinema or at home. The instruments we use have wrists and that means that they have uh, similar ability of the uh, human hand in terms of manoeuvrability and accuracy of dissection. The movements of those instruments is geared so that large movements by the surgeon turn into small movements inside, which again aids accuracy of uh, surgical dissection. Uh, and finally, um, the, uh, this all means that more complex procedures can be done in minimally invasive approaches compared to historically with standard laparoscopy and that means that more and more patients with kidney cancer might be offered the opportunity of say nephron sparing surgery that is a partial nephrectomy rather than losing the whole kidney as treatment for their tumour mass. How many robots are there in the UK and where are they situated? Uh, thank you for that interesting question and these are expensive machines but now uh, there are roughly 120 of the Da Vinci uh, robotic platforms in the UK. Uh, there are now other companies developing robotic platforms, uh, including uh, the Versius robot from Cambridge Medical Robotics, which is a British robot, uh, but there are less than five of those in the UK currently. Thank you. How long does it take to train to use the robot and become qualified? Good question. Um, I think that uh, that's always a difficult one to answer and it, and it largely depends on how experienced the surgeon slash trainee surgeon is in the first place. Uh, we are very lucky to have a renal cancer fellowship post uh, in the Frimley Renal Cancer Centre at Frimley Park Hospital and they're with us for a year. Uh, they're end of their urological training so they've completed their specialist training and they come for a year uh, to perform solely um, renal uh, and renal cancer surgery, predominantly using the Da Vinci robot. Uh, and at the end of that year, I expect, and it has been true for the last six fellows, that they can leave that post performing complex uh, robotic assisted renal surgery, that is partial nephrectomy largely, um, from start to finish without any supervision. I hope that answers the question. How is a surgeon selected for robot assisted surgery? Can you explain the training needed? That's quite a difficult one to answer. I think it's largely about what that surgeon wants to do in terms of their career. So uh, as a urologist, you're trained in general urology and all its aspects with exposure to various complexities of surgery. Uh, but in this era, uh, there's more and more subspecialization. There's uh, more intricate procedures and more difficult to learn. And you need to do fellowships to really to get enough experience and the skill set under your belt. So it's not so much who is chosen for it, but who chooses that this is uh, a dominant part of their future career uh, and they're going to dedicate their you know, good part of their time to performing uh, robotic renal cancer surgery. Can a patient specify to have robot assisted surgery? Again a another good but difficult question to answer. Uh, essentially you know, because of the structure of our National Health Service uh, there is not uniform uh, delivery of all types of surgery when it comes to kidney cancer. Uh, with over 100 robots in the UK, however, uh, most people find that within their cancer region there will be the option of robotic assisted surgery. Uh, however, saying that, all patients of course have choice within the National Health Service uh, and if uh, a patient decides they want to uh, have their surgery in a particular unit in the UK because they don't believe that uh, what they want is being offered locally, uh, then of course the patient has the right to request referral to another unit. Um, and that is what remains the case for not only renal cancer surgery, but all surgery. At which point is surgery deemed necessary over watch and wait? And what will be the determining factors to that? It's difficult to answer that, in fact. Um, I think as our understanding of the natural history, particularly of small renal masses, grows over time, we're gaining more and more confidence that many of these masses 
grow so slowly that they're essentially indolent and represent very little risk uh, to patients even over a prolonged period of time. Now of course the issues about the patient themselves come into play there, um, age, other medical conditions and you know bluntly speaking the likely life expectancy uh, in terms of balanced against the risk of how a lesion might behave. But under a policy of watchful waiting or, or perhaps a better term active surveillance because you are actively watching something rather than passively um, neglecting it one could argue if there is an unacceptable rate of uh, growth of a lesion uh, over a over the period of surveillance then that might trigger intervention or of course simply if a patient decides that the psychological burden of knowing there's a mass there which may or may not grow and develop um, is a trigger for surgical intervention is equally valid. What's the preparation process for the patient leading up to theatre? One would hope that uh, when, uh, if a patient is listed for a, any renal uh, surgery, renal cancer surgery, be it robotic, laparoscopic or open, um, that the patient will be fully informed about uh, the procedure. Normally that would involve a patient information leaflet, uh, there will be open contact details for your key worker, that would be uh, a urology cancer nurse, or in our case we have a specialist renal cancer nurse, um, such that any questions beforehand can be answered and there's a person that you know you can touch base with. In terms of the information about the process of coming to hospital, uh, that will be fed through there and then through the preoperative department who uh, would make an appointment for the preoperative tests. So they'll run through again the exact nitty gritty of where you come to and what time and when to stop eating and drinking. Um, and then uh, in, term, and in terms of uh, the process on the day itself. Uh, on that day is when you tend to meet the anaesthetist for the first time, but hopefully the surgical team you'll meet not for the first time on that day. Uh, in terms of for the final run through the ins and outs of the procedure and gaining formal written consent. As well as a partial nephrectomy, can the robot perform radical nephrectomies too? Thank you for your question. Yes, you can perform any of, of the uh, uh, surgery required for renal cancer robotically. Uh, perhaps sometimes the sheer size of a mass may make that inappropriate or difficult or indeed the uh, local disease itself may make that more difficult but in fact as time has gone on and experience and confidence has grown using robot, the, these robots the more and more complex surgeries performed be it removing a whole kidney be it a partial nephrectomy uh, or be it even removing uh, the kidney in the tube that runs down to the bladder of the ureter for a slightly different type of uh, renal tumour uh, called urothelial carcinoma. So yes Pretty much all aspects of uh, renal cancer surgery can be performed using the robot with increasingly few exceptions. When performing a radical nephrectomy, what happens to the remaining pipe from the kidney? Is it just tied up? Thank you for your question. Um, when the kidney is removed, uh, both the blood vessels feeding the kidney, that's an artery and a vein, or there may be multiple, and indeed the tube, the ureter, that drains urine away from the kidney uh, are blocked off in various ways. Uh, we use in the Frimley Renal Cancer Centre uh, things called hemolock clips or wet clips and they're polymer clips which lock um, and are very secure uh, and those are applied to both the cut ends of the artery, the vein and indeed the ureter. So yes, the ureter is blocked off um, within the field and scope of surgery which is normally down to about uh, sort of 10 centimetres or so off the kidney. Thank you. How long does the operation take and is it painful? I think in this era um, it's always difficult to answer that question because it will, vary, it will vary hugely from unit to unit uh, and indeed to some extent from patient to patient in terms of the complexity of the operation. But I think it would be reasonable to say certainly in my experience at the at Frimley Passport and Frimley Renal Cancer Centre uh, is that a uh, laparoscopic or robotic radical nephrectomy that is removing the whole kidney uh, will take somewhere between one to two and a half hours depending on complexity. Um, this is a little bit sore afterwards as you have to extend one of the so-called ports, the keyholes, so it's big enough to take the kidney out through as a whole specimen to be sent off to the pathologist. From the point of view of uh, robotic assisted partial nephrectomy, um, the uh, procedure again, probably pretty much similar period of time from a, a quick easy one uh, may take an hour, uh, a more difficult one two and a half hours or even three hours. 
Um, because the wounds, however, are smaller, because you're taking out smaller lesions, then ironically, actually, the discomfort is less and people are discharged home quicker. I guess the speed of discharge may reflect how uncomfortable it is. So in our unit, a laparoscopic or robotic radical nephrectomy stays on average two nights in hospital, whereas a robotic-assisted partial nephrectomy stays on average one night in hospital. Is the patient asleep when the operation is done? For any surgical procedure, that is where you're looking to remove tissue, be it the whole kidneys, a radical nephrectomy, or a robotic assisted partial nephrectomy, yes, you are under a full general anaesthetic, uh, as the procedure itself may take anywhere from one to three hours, uh, and one needs the muscles relaxed to allow the gas to get in so you can maximise your working space. So yes, all renal cancer and renal surgery is performed under general anaesthesia. Some alternative treatments for small renal masses uh, are so-called ablative treatments, and this is using either cold or heat, that is cryoablation or radiofrequency ablation, to try and treat these tumours, uh, often image-guided in the CT scanner. Now, these procedures in the modern era tend to be performed under what is known as conscious sedation, so you're half asleep, essentially. Uh, and they take a similar amount of time, actually, uh, and are performed as day case, sometimes staying a night. Uh, but that's the differences between a surgical procedure which will remove the tumour uh, through whatever route and an ablative procedure which is trying to avoid that essentially yet still treat the tumour. How long is a patient likely to be in hospital for from admittance to going home? Thank you for the question. I think that um, as far as, again, it depends on which type of operation you're having. Uh, if you're having a laparoscopic or robotic assisted radical nephrectomy, then a lot, slightly larger wound is necessitated to extract the kidney and the tissue around it, including the mass. With a robotic assisted partial nephrectomy, the wounds are smaller because the mass lesion you're taking out is smaller. As a result, those undergoing uh, removal of the whole kidney uh, in our unit spend an average two nights in hospital. That's from the coming in on the day of the surgery and going home after two nights stay. Uh, if you're undergoing a robotic assisted partial nephrectomy in our unit, then the average length of stay is in fact one night. So yet coming in on the day of surgery, be it the morning or the afternoon, and usually going home in the afternoon the next day. Remarkably quick, I think, and really quite extraordinary. And I think this says a lot about the advantages of minimally invasive surgery, and particularly the robotic assisted. Thank you. What is the recovery time? How soon can a patient expect to go back to work? We normally suggest that uh, patients plan to take four weeks off any strenuous activity. Um, as a reasonable plan. Uh, it's not so much about the wounds and being sore, but this is major surgery and your body and its physiology is well aware of that. And it's really most people uh, that do feel tired and they'll do some kind of exercise, exercise or activity which you wouldn't think would be particularly tiring but feel exhausted afterwards. And it's that, in fact, that takes the longest to settle itself down and after any of these surgeries, be they laparoscopic, robotic, taking out the whole kidney or partial nephrectomy. Uh, however, most people in reality uh, are back to doing normal things a week or two quicker than that. So somewhere between two to four weeks uh, would be a reasonable um, uh, guess, I suppose. Um, but obviously it varies from person to person. When you're younger, people get back to normal activity quicker. Older people may take a little bit longer. If a previously inoperable tumour has been reduced to within the kidney with immunotherapy and is currently stable, what are the benefits or risks to it being removed? Thank you for that uh, very difficult question, to which I'm not sure we have the greatest evidence base to really know what the right answer is. Certainly, in younger people in particular, if there's been a good response to immunotherapy and there's a remaining mass in the kidney, then we would look to see whether removing the kidney is feasible in a sensible manner in terms of safety and would offer it to the patient. There is an ongoing assumption with some evidence base that that patient will then do better. And indeed, if the immunotherapy has cleared, if you like, the metastatic disease or the locally advanced disease, that it would then render them tumour-free, theoretically, uh, and would allow them to get off treatment uh, and following surveillance thereafter. There, of course, are circumstances where a good response to immunotherapy may not be necessarily followed by surgery because the surgery might be deemed still very complicated and carry such a burden of risk that the potential slash theoretical advantages aren't worth it. So really, I think that, that question is on a, would only be answered on a case-by-case -case basis, and those, that case should be discussed 
uh, through a specialist renal cancer multidisciplinary team or MDT where both surgeons and oncologists are present. This patient asks, my surgeon mentioned that if my kidney cancer is a transitional cell carcinoma, he would have to trace it down from the kidney to the bladder and remove that pipe as well and potentially plant of my bladder. He said four or five years ago they couldn't do it in one operation, but with the advancements of robotics they can now do it in one. Could you talk a bit about the advancements in robotics up to this point, please? Uh, thank you for that question. So, uh, in essence, there are two types of cancer that can arise within the kidney. Uh, the first type, the renal cell cancers, arise from the meat of the kidney, uh, in fact, the functioning uh, filtering units of the kidney. The second type of kidney cancer arises from the drainage system of the kidney and the lining of that drainage system, uh, the urethelium, is also known as a transitional cell urethelium. Uh, and it is that tumour to which your that you unfortunately have and which your surgeon is referring to. That lining is the same from the kidney all the way down to the bladder and indeed within the bladder itself. So if one was just to remove the kidney and the tumour, you'll be left with a blind tube with this same lining, which would be very difficult to keep an eye on in terms of uh, checking for recurrence of disease. And therefore, the standard of care is to perform what's known as a nephro-ureterectomy. So nephro, take the kidney, ureter, the ureter, and ectomy, removing them. So, and that you need to do to make sure you've got it all. You also need to take a small cuff of the bladder right at the end of the ureter or the draining tube to ensure complete clearance. Now that is a slightly bigger operation than just removing the kidney itself, as obviously it's in two different uh, parts of the body almost. Um, with laparoscopic, but now particularly with robotic-assisted surgery, uh, the um, platforms mean that you can perform initially a nephrectomy, and this is the way that we do it, uh, and then simply swivel the robot to then attend to the ureter as it moves down towards the pelvis, and indeed ensure complete removal of the ureter into the bladder, and still close the bladder watertight so to minimise the need for a long-term post-operative urinary catheter, so a tube draining urine out of the bladder. So we've been using the robot uh, like this well, for the last 10 years, uh, and with the newest platform, the XI, which we've just got uh, delivery of at Fribley Park, uh, this means that we don't even have to re the robot, they can just literally just spin it so that it's facing one direction and then the other, which makes the whole procedure not only easier in many ways, but also uh, more efficient and quicker. So yes, the robot has distinct advantages in my eyes in terms of performing this procedure. And again, if you look at the experience of the patients uh, in our centre undergoing that, most people stay only two nights in hospital and go home without a catheter. And we're achieving the same kind of cancer cure rates as we were with either open or laparoscopic, uh, so standard keyhole surgery. And finally, what are the developments in novel treatments? What can we expect to see in the future? I think over the last decade, we've seen a whole raft of changes from the surgical aspect in terms of the management of kidney cancer. Of course, there have been a whole other raft of changes and developments in the world of oncology, so that's treating metastatic or advanced disease. In the surgical world, where you are aiming, remember, to cure the patient, uh, there's been two big changes. Firstly, was the arrival of the robotic platforms, uh, and secondly, the development of uh, CT guided, so image guided, ablated procedures for particularly small tumours, perhaps in those people who aren't fit for surgery. In the latter field, the energies being used have uh, developed, so we started off with radio frequency ablation, which is cooking it. Then we moved into cryoablation, which is freezing it. And now there are other uh, modalities coming on the line, such as microwave and electroporation, uh, which are in evaluation. From the true surgical aspect, that is, removing a tumour by cutting it out, uh, really, for me, the big development, uh, thanks to the robot, has been the ability to perform more and more complex surgeries on more and more difficult scenarios. So once upon a time, those patients being offered nephron sparing surgery, that is just removing the tumour and protecting the rest of the kidney, would be for the smaller tumours in good or friendly locations in terms of the access for surgery. But roll on time, and the robot has allowed us to offer nephron sparing surgery to more and more complex scenarios, bigger tumours, more deeply involved in the kidney, uh, more difficult to access. Uh, and this means that we've seen a shift uh, 
away from a shift in terms of the numbers of patients who are undergoing a radical nephrectomy now being overtaken by those patients who are being offered a robotic assisted partial nephrectomy. And we, we do this because we have the skill set and the experience and the tools to do that. But also there is the evidence that if we can preserve somebody's kidney function to the best of our ability, we have the same rates of cure from the cancer point of view, but to, is to the patient's advantage in terms of their long-term health and indeed longevity because we're preserving a greater proportion of their renal function. Mr Neil Barber, thank you so much for your time today. We very much appreciate it.